Hey, I'm Rob Jones and welcome to Tech Talk on Loop TV. This episode we're going to be looking at vocoders and how loops can be used with them to create interesting sounds on your tracks. I'm sure most of you will have heard of a vocoder at least, or will have heard one being used on the many classic vocoded tracks throughout the years. Recently, Imogen Heap's Hide and Seek, which uses just her vocoded voice the whole way through. The way a vocoder works is to take the amplitude of one audio signal, typically a voice or drum beat, both of which have distinctive rhythmic characteristics, and combine it with the frequency information of another signal, normally a synthesizer or white noise generator. The voice or drum beat is referred to as the modulator, and the synth or noise as the carrier. To show you how to set this up and the various parameters you can tweak, I'm going to use the new vocoder in Live 8. First thing you have to do is insert the vocoder on an audio track. Next, take a loop, such as one from the wicked new Dead Mouse Loop Masters sample CD, this one will do, so I drag it onto the track and click play. The sound you're hearing there is the drum loop modulating a noise generator, which is the default carrier when the vocoder is first opened. If I turn the vocoder off and then on, you can hear the difference between the original loop and the loop modulating the noise generator. There are parameters on the vocoder for affecting the number of transients or audio peaks you're hearing, such as a gate. Raising the gate threshold here means that audio peaks below the threshold won't be heard. There's also a depth control which controls how much of the loop's amplitude envelope is applied to the noise generator. Decreasing the depth in this case will mean that much more of the lower end of the noise spectrum will be heard. The attack and release times set how quickly the vocoder's filter bands react to amplitude changes in the loop, and then how long it takes them to fall to zero after they've reacted. So, a longer attack time softens the sound by letting more of the transients pass through unaffected, whilst a longer release creates a held sound, which is a bit like reverb. In the centre of the vocoder you can see the levels of each of the vocoder's filter bands, and so the spectrum of the sound you're hearing. If you like, you can change the number of filter bands here. You can then adjust the level of each of these bands with the pencil tool in order to EQ the vocoder output. Setting a higher number of bands, for example, means that you can set a very precise EQ curve, like this. You can then change the width of each band here, where lowering the percentage makes the band narrower, and so introduces more tonality into the sound. Lastly, you can shift the entire output up and down the frequency spectrum as follows. So now let's add a synth as the carrier. I'm going to use Novation's V Station. I just open it up on a MIDI track, select an appropriate sound, in this case one that's polyphonic and fairly loud, mute the track as we don't want to hear its normal output, just the one sent to the vocoder, then go back to my vocoder and select this track as the carrier, rather than the noise generator. One of the awesome things about Live is that you can use the computer keyboard to play the synth. So if I play a few chords on the keyboard and then I use the mouse to change parameters, you can hear some of the great sounds you can make.
Now let's stick a beat behind it, like one of the house beats from Aquasky's Loop Master's sample CD. So now you can go and have some vocoder fun of your own. As well as a loop, don't forget you can use a mic to vocode your own voice by selecting the mic input as the source on the audio track with the vocoder on and hitting record. So, see you next time for Tech Talk on Loop TV. <laughs>